Hey everybody, it's Stephanie Old World Gamer, and welcome back to Quest of the Farlands. And I've had a fantastic weekend because I went to the convention that I didn't shut up about, and I'm going to further discuss it in this episode. <laughs> As we walk to the Farlands, and if you are unfamiliar with me, I am, like I said, Stefan, the Old World Gamer. I prefer games from the Old World, and we are traveling this way. Uh, and uh, I, I'm a big retro gamer, that's where it started out, and I uh, moved into Minecraft after a couple of years. For, I used to hate Minecraft. I really did. I had a discussion with this uh, about this uh, over the weekend, actually, that at one point in time, I was very, very much against Minecraft. I thought it was a stupid looking game. I thought there was no point in playing it, and I don't know why other people played it. Then I gave it a chance. Then I got addicted. <laughs> so here I am. And uh, Quest of the Farlands is a series where we are walking 12 and a half million blocks away from spawn. Keep quiet, you. That's my zombie dog, Hops. He likes to hop, and he's a trickster, and he likes getting in the water and then shaking off over and over again, being a trickster. There he is again. Anyways. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I went to a convention this weekend, uh, and everything actually was pretty good. Um, now, the uh, I, I gained some new followers on Facebook and uh, on some of my channels, uh, which is great for me. But um, the convention, uh, I made more notice to it, that because uh, I paid attention, obviously, being my first time there, and knowing what the other booths were, were you know, what they had and such, so... Um, I was looking around and I was pretty much noticing that this sci-fi convention, although it encompasses like anime, science fiction, like like space and stuff like that, like Star Wars and Star Trek fans and all the other science fiction fans, plus there's anime and cosplay players, there's steampunk, there's, there's pretty much everything. There's people there, um, like game developers, uh, tabletop gaming is there, um, all of that had its own kind of place in the world or whatever or at the convention um but i noticed that the gaming uh sections even the tabletop gaming was all held away from the rest of the convention i was pretty much the only gamer that was at the convention and i noticed that the gamers that were there last year in the same place that i was weren't there even at the convention at all this year now that could be due to you know loss of interest or you know, maybe they couldn't get the time off or something, or, you know, perhaps it was funding. I don't know. Either way, um, I noticed that not as many people would stop by our booth, and not many people... Uh, ow! You actually hurt me then, dude. Uh, not many people were actually asking uh, about my channel. I mean, I would talk to them, and I would say hello, and I was friendly, I was smiling, and all that good stuff. And Don't get me wrong, uh, there were some people that came by and asked uh, specifically about the channel. And uh, a lot of people took business cards, but not a lot of people really uh, spoke to me much about, uh, uh, you know, about it. So uh, I was a little concerned, but I was like, you know what? You know, it, it is, like I said, a science, uh, science fiction convention. So, you know, perhaps, um, you know, this is not quite the place for me to be. So that being said, um, like I said, uh, there was another group there called Sandbox Gaming. Um, I know some of them, I know some of their members, and um, even with them, I've never really had them approach me either about anything. Like, I, I wouldn't mind helping out, but uh, I don't know, I don't want to feel like I'm imposing or anything like that, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of shy now compared to where I was before, so I I'm not so easily, uh, I don't so easily, you know, jump to going to go and do something like that because I feel like, you know, if, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's just not something that I would run into too quickly now, as opposed to when I was younger, I probably would have been, like, bugging them kind of thing, so, I don't know. Um, hello, piece of dirt. Anyways, sorry, uh, I got all, uh, I was looking at the landscape here, and I was like, hmm, is this a nice place to take a picture? I couldn't really decide, but no. Anyways, uh, but yeah, even the Sandbox Gaming Crew, um, they were up on the fourth floor, along with the Tabletop Gaming Room, uh, and I think they were actually hosting both, but 
they were on the fourth floor while everything else was in the lobby and on the first floor. And there was, that's, you know, the main lobby extends down to the first floor with a big spiral staircase. So it was easy to move around between all those places at the convention. But the gaming for them was kind of tucked away and not discussed or talked about as much. You know what I mean? So, like, unless you actually knew about it or, or, or you know, noticed it on their webpage or schedule of events or something, you probably didn't go up there at all. And, I don't know, that seemed a little bit... I don't know, it feels like it was being segregated against. And I'm not saying that, that that's what was happening, but that's what it kind of felt like. Like, why does it have to be separate? Uh, why can't there be a, a section just for the gaming people kind of thing? But, again, like I said, it is a science fiction uh, convention, so I understand. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm not trying to, like... <laughs> say anything bad about the convention because by all means it was fantastic it was awesome i got the network uh with a lot of people i got to meet a lot of people that's going to be uh in this business thing that we're going to be venturing into eventually oh i did not do that right ah i'm still not doing it right okay okay i'm not going to do that anymore i'm just going to leave it as is here is amber's so probably down through here somewhere Somewhere. I don't know. I don't care. I'm not gonna bother the zombies right now. <laughs> and swim, swim, swim. Swim around this tree. And it looks like we're going for another boat ride, I guess. Two boat rides in one day. Wow. Fantastic. Ooh. Or I could just surf. No. Uh, let's go. Let's go forward. Anyways, um... But yeah, a lot of good came out of it. We sold a lot of Perler Bead uh, art that uh, Robin created. And the huge piece, by the way, that we were talking about, we managed to finish it Friday morning at around 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it was all completely finished and done. Um, it, it turned out fantastic, especially for a first time doing one that large. Like, it turned out very well. Um, we sold... A little over 30 tickets I think it was 32 or 31 tickets and we raised $121 for Child's Play charity so I'm going to be donating that uh, I'm probably going to, to um, donate it through Kurt's channel because that's the channel ooh, that I'm more um, familiar with uh, for donations so um, and plus, I'd like to let him know that, uh, you know, that he has my support. Um, I haven't really tried to contact him or anything like that. And I don't even know if he even knows about me or who I am. And if he doesn't, that's fine. But I'd just like to know, let, like to let him know that uh, I do support him and what he's doing. I, I like that he's doing the whole charity thing. And good for him. I hope that, that it keeps working out for, for, for years and years to come. So it, it's good for everybody. Um... But anyways, so yeah, we raised $121 for Child's Play Charity, and uh, I know it's not a significant amount, but I mean, all we were doing is asking, um, we said to people that, you know, if you'd like a chance at winning this um, large pixel art project, which by the way was, if you're familiar with Chrono Trigger, um, it was the Wings of Time, the Epoch, with all the characters on it over uh, Guardia, and... Um, is that what it was called? Guardia? I think it was called Guardia. I could be wrong. Anyways, um, yeah, they're all on the wings of time, uh, in a pose or whatever, and, um, yeah, we pretty much said, like, anyone who makes a three dollar or more donation, uh, they can get a ticket on the, uh, on the Pixel Art Project. Uh, some people were just nice enough to just donate money, um, one of the guys, I know he doesn't do the podcast anymore, uh, he, he did, uh, do a podcast uh, called Console Culture. And um, he just uh, outright just uh, donated five dollars directly to Child's Play. <clears throat> there was a couple other people that you know, if they had a spare change or something like that, they donated Child's Play because, like I said, I think it was like thirty-one or thirty-two tickets. Robin knows the exact number. Which even at three dollars a ticket, that's only about what ninety dollars or so. So there were some people that, even though they weren't interested, or if they couldn't or didn't have a place to put the polar bead art itself they said you know I, I don't need the ticket but i will donate to child's play because it is a good cause and uh, and that was great I, I was very happy to see that uh the people were willing to uh, be charitable for a good cause such as that and uh yeah I, I we're hoping to do it again in august 
And I'll get to that in just a moment because apparently we're going to be going to sleep very soon. Just got to probably... Mm, I was going to say get through these trees, but I don't know if that's going to work. Oh, I see some gravel over there. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll sleep over gravel for the night. Yep. A lot of gravel here, actually. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's a lot of gravel. Oh, so yeah, but we did have a great time. Um, but like I said, I, I will discuss a little bit more about that in the morning. Uh, put that in our bed. And good night. And wake and ready for a new day. So yeah, as I was saying, um, yeah, so everything went well. We got, uh, we've done a lot of networking there. I got some new followers on Facebook and some of the channels. Um, whoa. I knew I was going to take a half hour to damage Dan. Crap. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing it again in August. Because in August, there's another convention that I only recently found out about called the Avalon Expo. Which, it's held, I think, in an arena if I'm not mistaken. So basically, um, at the it's going to be held in an arena. I'm going to have my own booth for, with a lot more polar bead sprites there for Robin, from Robin, or made by us. <laughs> but she's going to, she looks after that stuff because, well, she's used to it. She, she's used to handling money and all those other great things. But, um, yeah, no, uh, we're going to try and do a couple of different um, Perler B projects this year, and maybe, uh, or for this year, for, uh, in the ne upcoming months, uh, for that convention, so that we can potentially raise even more, that's, that's the hope, anyways. Um, I'm still gonna be there, uh, and gaming and stuff, but that's all I did at the convention, was I just played video games the entire time, so... I mean, that's all I could do. I could, couldn't could lift anything because my shoulder's still bummed out, and I have to go and schedule some physiotherapy for that uh, soon. Uh, probably t later today, after I'm finished recording this, I'll uh, probably go down and talk to them about that and see what I have to do or whatever. But uh, as of right now, um, there we go. have some minor... Get my feet wet. Get my feet soaked in water. Waterlogged, I guess, if you will. I'm a zombie. I'll just absorb all the water into my my gross, dirty flesh. <laughs> but yeah, no, my shoulder's still hurting. Um, I actually slept on it because I was super tired. Um, one of the nights at the convention, I end up sleeping on it, and it kind of made it a little bit, a little bit of better. It got uh, made it go back to where it was before, so that was kind of crappy. But, uh, like I said, I'm going to go and get some physiotherapy done, and hopefully that'll uh, bring it back to where it's supposed to be, and I can get back to work and get back to doing other things. But, whew. Um, so, yeah, uh, in other news about the convention, though, um, I was going to stream, and I'm sure you guys seen the uh, the videos up on, the ch up on uh, YouTube, whether you watch them or not, I'm not sure, but... Um, Basically, uh, I went there, and this was all in the hopes that the wired internet at the hotel was going to be good enough to let me stream. Well, the first night, Friday night, uh, I streamed for about an hour, and uh, there wasn't too many people around. But I come to find that the wired internet at the hotel is weak... Actually, not not as weak. They have the same um, download and upload uh, rate as the wireless. So, figure that out. For some reason, the wired internet and the wireless internet are the same strength. How does that happen? How, how is your wired internet crappier than your wireless internet? That makes no sense to me. So, unless they have some way of, like, capping it or something so that it doesn't go too high or whatever. Either way, um, it really stripped my chance at uh, doing the stream. And, damn it, Hops. Yeah, I know, you're, you're real funny getting in my way and pushing me off. 
anyways that was fun <laughs> vibrating um yeah so it really threw a a wrench into my plans and of course i couldn't stream at all on saturday night because the the rates were so bad that um i couldn't even get like on friday it was um like it was laggy and by laggy i mean like Instead of being the, like, say, normal 10 seconds behind, it was about 20 seconds behind, but the stream was regular and it was going and it was fine. And so I was like, okay, that whatever, you know, at least I have that. But on Saturday when I tried to do it, oh my god. It, it was it was so bad. It was cutting in and out. Um, OBS was showing a zero KBS, uh, or KBPS, <laughs> So, uh, it, it was, it was really, really horrible. Um, so I couldn't even stream Saturday. I couldn't even attempt to stream on Saturday. And the worst part was, is that on Saturday, there were like a half dozen people just there waiting to watch. Not only that, but a lot of people who came by that day at the convention were going to go and watch. So who knows how many people could have ended up coming there and be, you know, looking there and saying, okay, well, where's the stream this guy is talking about? So, unfortunately, I don't know um, what what's going to happen because of that. That's probably not a good uh, a good strike against me by any means. So I, I'm hoping that people have a little bit more faith and that they know that the wired uh, they realize that the wired net at the hotel is what screwed everything up for me. So if not, that's all I can do, and I will persist to keep moving forward. And uh, that's all you can do, really. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we haven't seen anything too fabulous in regards to landscaping just yet, either. Anyways. Uh, one thing I did do on Sunday was I did beat my old Bomberman record. Um, I basically uh, got to uh, 3 billion points again. And, uh, and then I pretty much packed up my stuff and we left. <laughs> because Robin had pretty much finished everything she had to do. We had given away and drew the name uh, for the large uh, Perler project. And, um, and yeah, we were ready to leave. We were both super tired, looking forward to getting home. Uh, had other things to do as well. And, uh, and yeah, so basically we left the convention uh, a little bit early. And, uh, but it was fine. We, we, like I said, we had a really good time. Uh, we, we learned a few things about uh, how to do some stuff while we were there. I don't know why I'm throwing down random dirt like an idiot. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we know, we know uh, what we're going to be doing for the next one. We're, we're, we're slowly planning things out together right now. So that that's in the plans now for August. Um, I did pick up some new stuff. Uh, I managed to finally get myself a foam Minecraft tool. It was a diamond axe. It was either that or a shovel. And Robin got me an axe. There was no... Excuse me. There was no pickaxe or um, swords there, unfortunately. And you need to die, apparently, because we need chops of pork. Hops, get him! Get him, Hops, get him! Yeah, there you go. Actually, I'm going to eat that one. Uh, there was another... Hey, here he is. Come here, you. Get him, Ops. Get him. Get him. Yeah, good dog. Okay, there we go. So, let's keep moving. Come on, Ops. Let's keep moving. I said, geez. <laughs> Try not to fall down any of the holes, please. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, some other things I got there. I got a box Super Nintendo uh, game, and uh, I also bought Robin some earrings, and uh, I had to get a new game controller because for some reason my PS3 controller would not work with our laptop. Even though it had Windows 8.1 and such, it still did not want to work with the laptop. Um, so Robin went out to EB and she got me a new uh, USB controller that was supposed to work with uh, PS3 and computers so I went and used it of course it worked uh, but you could not um, turn it into um, or, 
or emulate an Xbox controller with it because Motion Joy wouldn't allow me to, more or less. So I think I see something here that I would like to. No, hmm, maybe not. This was not as fancy as I'd. Oh, oh I don't know why I had to open my inventory then, but uh, okay, let's let's keep moving. Oh, looks like it's it's gonna get dark soon. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else you might have gotten. Oh, Robin bought me another one of the uh, little surprise Minecraft things where it's like a little uh, something from Minecraft in a bag that's like a keychain kind of thing. And uh, I was like, awesome. Uh, you know, I love opening those because there's still a bunch I don't have. And I managed to get a new one. I got a chest. So I've, I've got myself a chest now, and uh, it, it's actually cool because it opens up. That's what I really liked about it. I can open it up and actually put something in it. So now I just need to find something fun or cool to put in it, and that that's going to be great. And there we go. Put down our bed for this evening. Sheltered by the woods. It's gonna, it seems like it's probably going to be a nice warm evening to not so much wind. So good night, everyone. Okay, so, he, what, what, what are you saying, what, what am I doing, am I following you, or, you're not doing, okay, I'm, you're, I'm gonna stop, not, anyways, um, so, um, uh, I tried looking around for some more uh, retro games to add to my collection, but unfortunately, um, there wasn't really much there that I wanted. Uh, nothing that really piqued my interest, and nothing that would have stood out enough for me to want. Um, the only thing that I've seen there that I thought about for a moment, and then it was snatched up by a very young girl uh, with a juicy $100 bill, <laughs> um, uh, was a gold or as they were calling it in other places, a gold-silver um, uh, Game Boy uh, Pokemon edition. Uh, gold-silver Pokemon Game Boy, and it had like a couple little small Pikachus on it and stuff like that. And I mean, it looked nice and all, but he was asking 80 for it, and he had a nice little yellow Pokemon case for it and stuff. And I looked online and I found one that was, I think, $60, and then I found a couple other ones that were around $100 as well, so I was like, hmm, the, the girl probably done herself, you know, she's got something that she probably wants, and I was like, you know, it's better for her to have it than me, because I'm not a huge, huge Game Boy player, I was never a big portable games, you know, player, but uh, I'm getting more and more into it. Um, well, geez, at, at, the, at the convention, I got, how many, like, 240 street passes or something? Which was, I thought was phenomenal. I, I was really thoroughly impressed with that. I was happy that there were so many people that had 3DSs uh, or even a D or whatever at the convention. And that was a lot of street passes. A lot of them were repeats as well, obviously. But, uh, uh, you know, just people walking in. Because I don't know what the what the times are. I'm sure some people out there know a lot more about the street pass times and how long it takes for, you know, before you get the repeats or something like that. But... Uh, yeah, I got to meet a few, a nice few people. Uh, again, trying to get my name out there as best I can. Uh, I kind of feel, I just, I don't want to be like uh, the person who's bugging people about uh, the, the whole YouTube thing. But, I mean, how else are you supposed to, like, get people to watch it if you don't, you know, shove it in their faces all the time? But, I mean, that's what I keep thinking about. And why do I, I don't know why I punched all that grass back there. But, uh, yeah, so, um, ah, I was thinking about, uh, at some point in time, I wouldn't mind going to a convention and holding a quote-unquote workshop where I can tell people or show people how to actually do the YouTube thing. Like, if they want to be a Let's Player or even a game reviewer, you know, you can ask me about anything. I mean, I don't have, I'm not saying I'm, like, an advanced professional, like, uh, videographer or anything like that by any means, but I know enough to, to, uh, to, you know, be able to share the information with other people. I know enough to make my stuff look good when I need it to look good. Now, for myself, I, I have issues with a lot of lighting. 
and I have to use uh, two lights. The thing is, I don't have a place here to get the big uh, halogen bulb, or no, I think they're are they halogen. No, they're not. They're like uh, tungsten or so. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what kind of bulbs they are. Um, either way, it's just hard to uh, position it because one. I have a small space and these things are, oh wow, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, we're up really high. <laughs> but, oh, okay. And uh, so, as I was saying, um, you know, I have problems with lighting because it's hard to move the tripods for the lights and stuff around without, uh, quiet you. It's hard to move the lights around without, you know, something else being in the way or, you know, something along those lines, so. Uh, but I, I do adapt to it and I do get used to it and I do know how to, you know, do stuff with lighting. I know about video editing, I know about audio editing, I know about, uh, you know, different video and audio equipment. I've got, what, like five or six different cameras here, video cameras, so I mean, you know, I, I have some experience. I'm not, like I said, I'm no, like, professional or an, or advanced user by any means. I, 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 I'm sure a lot of people would say, no, you're no an advanced user. But, uh, you know, I, I think I have enough knowledge that, like I said, I can pass it on to other people. So that could be something I may look at uh, doing in the future. But uh, anyways... Um, I'm hoping that if there's more people at the Avalon Expo that I'm going to get a look around early so then that way I can possibly um, have a look and see if there's anything, uh, any retro games or anything that I want to add to my collection there because <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I've said it to you guys before but oh god let's get away from that lava. Um, I do, I'm a, I am a game collector, I do collect retro games specifically. Uh, especially uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, complete in-box games. Uh, I have a small but very nice, humble collection of games right now. I have about 30 or 40 box Nintendo games, and I have about 20 uh, or so uh, box Super Nintendo games. Tons of loose cards, all that other stuff. And again, you guys might not even care. You, you, you know, you're saying, why do you even want those? But um, because they hold a lot of nostalgia, I like to actually play the video games on, their, on the consoles themselves. Um, but I'm also very nostalgic in a way that a lot of times I don't like playing games by myself. Like, I don't have anyone that I can constantly converse with in real life about video games. Like, I don't have any friends' friends anymore. So... You know, having someone come over to hang out and play video games doesn't happen for me. Uh, which means that the only games I get to play are usually by myself. Now, don't get me wrong, me and Robin play a lot of games together, and uh, there's a lot of fun games that we do enjoy to play together, like uh, Smash Bros, uh, Mario Kart, um, and we've been uh, trying to get more and more into just gaming together as much as we can, but... I'm sure any person, any guy especially, can say this, like, yes, it is fun gaming with your girlfriend, but uh, th it, there's also different gaming when you're there with guys, and, um, I mean, she, she likes the video games and stuff, but she doesn't have the same passion like I do, like, she wouldn't, she doesn't know about a lot of retro games at all, she doesn't, uh, like, she probably doesn't know which games I, I, I would want over others, or... Uh, she doesn't have the passion of uh, collecting new games for the, you know, the game library. And, and like I said, that's fine. I don't expect her to have to like everything that I like. That's not how a relationship works. But, uh, th and that's what I'm saying when I, when I say that I need, a, like, another friend who is into that kind of thing. Because, you know, I, I can talk to them about, hey, well, what games do you got and what games do I got? And, oh, you went away and you got a, a bundle of NES games, like a box of NES games, loose carts. And, you know, oh, you had five or six doubles? Okay, well, if you're going to give them to me, then the next time I get doubles, I'll give them to you. And um, one of my only friends that I ever did do that with, um, his name is Chris. Um, he uh, it, it lives quite far away from me right now, about two hours or so driving, uh, maybe more. Uh, it's been a while since I've been to Clarenville, but... Um, yeah, he's out around Clarenville area of Newfoundland, which is, like I said, a little bit further away from us. And uh, so I don't get to see him all the time. Uh, it's been actually a couple of years since I have seen him, but uh, 
he was the one who originally helped me start uh, my the, the biggest main part of my Super Nintendo collection. Um, he provided me with a lot of games that normally you wouldn't you you would be paying a lot a lot a lot of money for. So he was one of my uh, probably one of my best friends, and uh, like I said, it's hard. Uh, he's he's got his own uh, kid now, and he's got his own family, and I know that his. Uh, um, his girlfriend uh, has a son, uh, Harley, who uh, who actually enjoys a lot of Minecraft, and uh, uh, I don't know if he's going to be watching or not, but Harley, if you're there, hello, hello, good sir, uh, <laughs> welcome to Quest of the Far Lands, uh, but um, I guess, you know, uh, I wouldn't mind going out and seeing him again, and he always comes across... Uh, he always comes across better deals and better, uh, you know, retro gaming things than I do at good prices, and, and sometimes free, and 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 that's always a great thing for any collector. I mean, if you can get games for free, great. But again, I'm not one of those collectors that oh, if I get a double or if I get something I don't like, I sell it. No, 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 no. I, I think that those dealers uh, or those collectors are a little bit more. They don't appreciate the game as much as they should because like I said, I think every game whether it's a double or not should be left in your library It's yours. You bought the game. You you wanted it for a reason So don't don't get rid of it just because you've already got another copy Where are you hops sit? I am digging down And there we go, we got a nice little place in here. Uh. So yeah, um, hopefully, I'm not sure if, uh, I know Chris doesn't get as much time to uh, watch any of my videos and stuff. Or, and I'm not even sure if Harley even watches my videos, but uh, hopefully they do, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I've brightened up somebody's day just a little bit more. Good night, Haps. I hear pigs out there, you can eat them if you want. Um, but yeah, uh, I wish I had a friend such as Chris around that I could game with on a more regular basis and, you know, just have that uh, that friendship and be able to talk in, about games and discuss games like we used to. And uh, he doesn't even uh, collect either, so <laughs> he just uh, has games there to play just for himself because, well, he likes to play the old games as much as I do, so... Uh, he, he was the one who got me into Pirates as well, which, God love him, because that game is fantastic. <laughs> and, um, anyways, uh, something that I've been searching for for a long, long time, uh, since I've gotten the, um, since I've gotten it in box, was, uh, the manual for the game Faria for NES. I can't even find that thing on, like, eBay without it having, without having to buy the, either the game or the complete box game, so. Oh, lots of disappointments. Lots of disappointments. Anyways, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, please leave a like and maybe a comment. Let me know what you enjoyed and perhaps even start a conversation. All that good stuff. And as always, thank you all for watching. I'm Stephanie Old World Gamer, and I will see you all soon for another quest to the Verlands. Good night.